Thank you very much, dear chairman, dear ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm pleased to be here and to share um, the live case. Uh, I've got a great introduction, introduction by Professor Corti, and now I want to show you the, the, the real live case. Just from um, one introduction slide, it's a case presentation. It's a standard left atrial appendage case, 80-year-old male patient with the with high risk scores you, you may recognize down here in the bottom. With a live case, it's a live on the box, and just to give you the, the smell of the live case, um, I want to, to give you also the, the original sound with it. And so we start. Um, we already the know from TOE investigation a few days ago that there's uh, no thrombus in left atrial appendage. <laughs> Prepare myself for transeptal puncture. So checking the ISO center in the AP, then going to the RAO 30, transeptal With the ARIO 30, I want to have the, the transeptal sheet more or less straight, which is at 1600. I've got a um, calibration simultaneously with the, with the TOE probe, and that the calibration is correct uh, is marked by this green sign um, on the TOE probe. And now I move to the LAO 45, where I want to do the transeptal puncture. And also, this gives me more precise calibration. The interaction is correct. We've got a green sign. I'm coming down. I have a nice overlay on the right part. I'm now in the apical part, the cranial part of the fossa. You see the tenting and pulling down further. You're able to follow the tenting. I want to puncture in an inferior part. Now I'm in the inferior part of the fossa and we are going to check um, in the 45 degree short axis view um, whether I'm anterior or posterior. So middle part of the septum, try to turn a little bit more clockwise and uh, as you see the um, transeptal sheet is coming posteriorly or is moving posteriorly and now I try to puncture here. I've got a very good overlay. Nice tenting. Now increase slightly the, the pressure and pass with the needle, with the dilator, hold the dilator and needle tight and now pass with the, with the sheet. As you see in, in the echo on the left side, got a nice explain view of uh, my transeptal sheet. I placed a marker at the, at, just at the spot where I passed the septum. This gives me afterwards um, nice help uh, during the procedure that I always know where um, the septum is. So we use a diluted contrast, and because of this, we, uh, the amount of contrast is re reduced, um, but the, um, the structure or the, the anatomy is still very good to identify. Um, the, the sizing was quite difficult, and we start um, to size always the orifice and then the landing zone, and also the depth of left atrial appendage. And um, we do this in fluoro and in echo, as we have both imaging modalities. We want to do it um, like we, like we all call it, multimodal imaging, and um, then consider uh, the, the, the measurements in, in all dimensions and in all um, echo and fluoro views. Deep inside and hoch. Yeah, genau. Super. Super. So it stops here. What you 
may see that the anatomy was really difficult. We saw we were able to size, of course, in, in, the, in the 45 um, short axis view, but uh, still in the, in the corresponding 90 to 120, 135 degree, is we saw a, a quite um, sharp angle due to the chicken wing configuration, which makes, the, makes it really challenging. And the, the sizes, the sizing results, um, from uh, ECHO and uh, here uh, presented the, the data from the fluoro show that we have a landing zone of 27 in the areocranial and of 29 in the areocaudal. Um, but still with this angle, it's, we, we discussed, uh, well, we needed some five to 10 minutes to discuss where, want we, where, where do we want to put our lobe? Do we want to put it um, behind this, this, this angle? Do we want to put it um, above? Or perhaps do we use this sharp bend to anchor the lobe? Um, so the question here is um, which size we would choose. And um, obviously we're in the, in the lower, lower part of the sizing chart. And um, we went for the further 31 um, Amplitzer Amulet Occluder. The, the orifice of let it will appendage the pigtail inside. And going in. Let's place a marker at the tip of the crystal. That's not so bad, Katharina. How mal da oben den doing an X-plane view. Okay. And um, Katharina, beim CX, noch mal genau drauf mit der Achse. And also place a marker at circumflex artery. I've also had marker one at the septum. Now that my the tip of my delivery sheet for introduces at the septum, I'm advancing it slowly. Now the transition between introducer and sheet, and the sheet has passed the septum. I'm pulling back the introducer. What we are able to see here right now is that um, the, the uh, three-dimensional aspect is very important to consider because the, the mark of the transeptal puncture is not precise right now. The marker is set, like Professor Corti said, in the, in the patient's space. So as soon as the patient moves a little bit on the table, we, we lose the marker. We see the marker is precise concerning medial and lateral, but still we moved in, in the other axis, in anterior, posterior. Um, and therefore, it's not really precise and echo. But what we were able to see is that the crystal and the circumflex are li like a goal, where, where we want to go now with our catheter. And we know this is the top and the, and the lower part. And by, by using now the, the amulet lobe, like we've seen it in, in cases before today, as an airbag or as a ball, it's, it's really atraumatic. And we just go. Um, between those two posts, those two markers, um, into the into the, the, the deeper lobe of this um, chicken wing anatomy. No X-ray no image right now because I'm not on the fluoro. Then I only see the, the echo overlay. You're able to increase or decrease the, the intensity of the overlay, or you're also able to, to put the overlay out if you really want to concentrate for a few minutes on, on pure fluoro. What is going to happen with this big occluder? Mm. Not that bad. And as we see right now, the lobe is already um, within the left atrial appendage. Not that bad, like I said, but, um, but still a little bit perhaps too, too far outside. Um, the disc is, uh, is at the ostium, but the question right here was, um, are we satisfied with the position or not? And f for the beginning, perhaps, 
placing the markers, like you've seen, really easy, but would you use those markers? And if you use them, do you think they are of any help? The third marker we, dis uh, we discussed uh, yesterday is perhaps also a nice idea to place a, a third or fourth marker at the, at, the, at the end of the left atrial appendage so that you mark the, the, the depth, the, the place of, um, of the maximum um, uh, where you want to go with the catheter, not to harm it. So do we already have a vote? What do you think about the markers? Okay, so it's 50-50. Um, Let's see how the implantation goes on with, with those markers. So like, because I have both imaging okay, modalities, echo and fluoro, I, I use both. I gave contrast and now change to, to the four screen echo it. navigation view where I have in, live echo and the 3D free, free, free echo view bad. where I can crop in and crop out the the left atrial appendage and are able to really look at my device from different angles, which even the echo guy is not able to present to me because I'm able to turn it and to crop in and out. So now looking at the position and as you may see, circumflex artery, part of the lobe is, is protruding a little bit. I think due to the length of the amulet, which is longer than the um, the amplets so the ACP we started with, and also because it's this big amulet which is compressed and then the um, part of the, of the lobes is protruding a little bit, and we discussed uh, within the team whether to, to leave it here or not. And from the pictures I gave you, are not the, the whole pictures, but um, or the, the, everything you want to see perhaps, but still try to vote, would you leave it here? Or do you think it's not perfect? I, I go for another run. So this was also the discussion we, we had in the cath lab. Um, I would position deeper. Um, Good idea. We, we weren't s totally uh, satisfied with the, with the implantation depth and we wanted to check the, the stability of the system and therefore uh, the next step was to, to perform a tuck test. And so it's also really nice to see the, the precise overlay of disc and lobe and the tuck test. It was only a little bit of force needed to pull the, the device out. So we Obviously, we had to start over again and pulled back the disc and the lobe and went in again between those posts and tried to, to turn counterclockwise to get it more to the one o'clock position and to, to get it deeper inside. And with its overlay, it's just intuitive to see, okay, where is my my, my low versus my left atrial appendage structure. But even if you're more familiar, you like the, the, the pure echo view in this so part of the procedure, proceed you have it on the left side right and may consider positioning again back with a in echo. Sheet a little bit and now gentle pull. So with this position, we, we are nice. deeper and you're also really, we are quite Good, able to see that the, the circumflex artery is here and the device is within it's, it's the left vessel. atrial appendage. And so concerning the final check, we went to, to echo again. What do you use? Contrast angio, echo doppler, 2D echo, 3D echo, all of them to, to, to check your result concerning stability, coverage of the ostium, um, residual leakage, um, and any uh, perhaps structural um, harm which you have performed to other structures in the left atrium. Yes, you you go to question or to answer five, which is uh, I think a. Uh, right answer is we have this opportunity to, to use 
the, the angio, the fluoro um, without contrast, with contrast, and uh, of course echo and the 3D, 2D options we have today, it just makes sense to, to, to check um, with all these modalities our result. We, we see again that the circumflex and lobe in the 45 degree position gives us an, a good and stable um, left atrial appendage occluder in place. And even with this, with this large ridge, I think we have got a also very good position at the upper part concerning the um, warfarin ridge. So the final result with fluoro, you see this huge uh, occluder, the 31 amulet, circumflex with some calcified structures which, are, which we have matched in echo, which we have um, positioned in echo the marker, which helped us, um, and, and the disc um, closing up most of the orifice, but still with this, you, you remember the, the long ridge, we have a few millimeters up here, which even this huge occluder wasn't able to cover, but I think clinically good result. So the echo navigation in four steps. What, what we can do right now, what is uh, the, the, the routine in daily cath lab um, echo navigation procedures is first of all calibration, which just means that fluoro and echo um, recognize each other um, and you see the positive calibration result by this green marked TOE probe. The Econav guided transeptal puncture is really intuitive, coming down with a needle, see everything in one image. You don't have to do the overlay within your head, it's just there on the screen. You place the markers um, to, to, give you, to give you hints, posts, where to, to, to target your, your material, and then the Econav guided implantation, um, like you have seen uh, with the cases from Presacorti and with the live case right now. So I think it's simple, it's safe, and also it is, it's easy to learn, and in the end, it's or not in the end, the end comes, comes quite, after a few procedures, it also is time saving, and um, I think it's a step ahead in structural heart disease interventions. Thank you.